I will moderate it. I will ask that everybody stop talking to not type to hold their questions till the end. And then we'll move on from there. Does that make sense so far? Anybody have any, any points? Yes. Yo. And the R your ARM environment, you have to differentiate on the period when you are looking at the briefing versus the period when you are actually briefing. So I'm not exactly sure which period you mentioned that you meant. Like, let's say that we're in primary and I have already made the, the notes on the map and I'm ready to start disseminating information to my squad leaders and to start the overall mission briefing. That's when it becomes a one-way communication and that's when all two-way communication needs to stop. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so here's the other thing. Um, typically in a briefing, this is the general rule, you know, rule of thumb that I use, is that I have 15 minutes. 50, anything after 15 minutes, it doesn't matter if it's in ARMA, and BMS, and real world, I have 15 minutes to get the most important information to you, to your ears, or to your eyes, whether it's visually or by speaking, for you to actually retain that information and to make it useful. So for me to keep, to, for me to brief all the minuscule stuff at the at beginning and then leave all the important stuff towards the end, I'm actually, in my opinion, becoming less effective as, as a ground commander or as a briefer, we'll call it that, or an instructor if I hold my information to the end. Because at this point, you've lost your, your train of thought on what I'm doing or what I'm trying to teach you. And on top of that, now you're just less focused. I, like I said, I use a 15-minute rule of thumb. So these briefings that extend for more than 30 minutes, uh, they're completely ineffective. You might as well just be singing to them because they're not listening to you. Uh, unless somebody actually really gives a shit. So we'll, we'll stop there. We'll open it up. For you know, we'll open it up to questions and answers right here or discussion. So, how do you guys feel about that so far? I mean, I'm uh, in regards to keeping the floor clear while the uh, CO is speaking. I'm inclined to agree with that. However, I have a uh, question regarding enforcement. Sure. It. Uh, I mean, for instance, you would say, "All right, guys, it's time to brief. I'd like TS quiet and keep the chat box clear." what happens when they just start using group chat instead and you check the server logs and see they were group chatting while you were briefing i i'm not like i said i'm not policing everybody i'm not telling you that like, you can't do it i'm just saying this is person my personal opinion how i would do it i can't stop you from doing anything and i i really won't enforce it i won't go in there and tell you to stop um unless it's becoming disruptive and it's taking away from everybody else's <clears throat> I, don't, I don't think that's necessary either at least I when I squad lead for example I can still listen to the briefing and then in the meantime tell my group chat my team leader to prepare this and that when we get in game I don't think that is detrimental to the briefing right it's, I, not, fair. it's not it's not in at the same time I just I, well I guess I could see allowing group chat but I think side chat just draws everybody's eyes to it and uh, their focus off of whoever's trying to send info down I agree yeah. with that. Uh, it's a it's a balancing act. It really is. All right. So you don't want to be too anal about it, so to speak, and taking away from, like I said, the fun factor of the game because at the end of the day, it is a game. But at the same point, uh, you want to be effective and you want that information to be retained. So it is a, it is a juggling act. Now people are using side chat, and it's complete just derp, and it doesn't. It's not aiding to the actual flow of the mission briefing, then personally I would tell them to stop. If this was real world and I was teaching somebody, like let's say I had a student, uh, any like, <laughs> I'll tell you time and time again, I've had officers that have been chit-chatting in the back of the room and I will literally stop what I'm doing and just look at them until they're done talking. All right, so it's really like, it's really that mature factor where you have to just assert your I, I wouldn't really say your authority but what your intent is if your intent is for them to and uh, take in that information then you need to make sure that they understand that if your if your attitude towards this briefing is that you you, you allow to a communication then state that but the biggest thing is you let them know what you're expecting all right I, I as an instructor will tell you what I'm expecting from you as a student or from you as a squad leader and the general what I mean by this is let's say I'm briefing uh, op enduring freedom and I give a very specific tasking to a squad leader I will brief that squad leader and then probably ask him at the end of the briefing what his assigned you know what is uh, what his task or his mission was 
that way i i have assurance that he is took taken in that information and he's able to understand and coherently you know take that mission out so to speak Does that make sense yeah what one of the uh, one of the things i notice is i can use that text chat as a barometer so if i'm if I, we're doing the briefing and nobody's text chatting and nobody's interrupting the person giving the briefing, I get excited because I know I'm in for a good mission because I'm not playing with a bunch of assholes. And th th that is, you have to really lead from the top when it comes to that as well. Um, generally speaking, when I, when I give a briefing or if I'm talking uh, or if I want somebody to pay attention to me, I will assure that they are at whatever degree that I need to do that in. It depends on the situation. But like I said, generally, I, I state my intent on what I expect, and then from there, I'll start my briefing. So if I, in, my intent is for them to understand every aspect of the mission and not and really micromanage it, then I will tell them right off the bat. If you know, if it's opposite, then I'll tell them that this is a you know X type of briefing. This I'm going to hold all questions till the end. And let's get this started. All right. So that's that's generally as as a PO, as a squad leader, it, you could, it could be even as a fire team leader. I giving it, disseminating information out is very important because if you're disseminating information to a group or an audience and you want them to retain that information, it's very important that they understand how serious it is. Does that make sense? If if I go into a briefing and I say, all right, I don't really give a shit what we're doing here, you know, uh, one 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 two one three, this is what your objective is. Obviously, by my attitude and my tone, you are going to be less effective in receiving that information. Now, for example, let's say that I was saying, hey, one one, all right, this is what you're what you're going to be starting out with, or where your your current position is when we start this mission. You're going to proceed to this grid. We're going to provide a base of fires, and you're going to overwatch this target while one two infiltrates from the east. Uh, at the end, I'm going to ask you what your game action or your game plan is specifically to get to that point. I'm going to give you an overall objective, and I'm going to ask you questions on how you're going to get there. Does it make sense? Yeah. Yep. All right. So here's segueing into giving a tasking or giving a mission or you know. And so on and so forth. Uh, projector voice, all right. Projector voice with assurance. That is ninety percent of briefing. It sure is. I I, I personally believe that uh, when I was going through instructor upgrade, it wasn't. You know what you know is very important, but how you deliver that information is also equally as important, if not more important, in my opinion. Um, so, as well as projecting your voice with assurance, uh, simplicity and being coherent with what you're trying to disseminate is also important. And what I mean by that is verbal diarrhea and just, you know, get, getting out there and just placing a shitload of markers on the map and making it to the point where it's so complex that even the basic rifleman does not un understand the overall objective of, of what we're trying to do. Um, now, simplicity and coherent doesn't mean you have to water it down to the point where it just doesn't make any sense anyways. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is, uh, where it's detracting from the overall detail of the mission. Um, but simplicity and being coherent can be taken in very different ways. And what I mean by that is just get the information out there in the basic level, and if it needs to be tailored or added or enhanced afterwards, then do that. But basic, like let's say that for Enduring Freedom... Hold on, somebody's at the door. Nope. All right. So who's going to be my first uh, test dummy here, and who's going to be the first platoon leader? Any any takers? Anybody at all? Yep, somebody's here. I'll be right back, guys. Uh, amongst yourselves, please. Just uh, go ahead and pick somebody. The effort, or will be the main effort against objective Anna. Objective Anna split into three sectors. There, let me just draw another. You should use a dot.
Right. Objective Anna split into three sectors. Three will remain in OV, separating objective two and three from uh, from sector one. While two squad will conduct clearance from south to north through sector one. Um, civilian concerns in this regard: make sure the fuel station doesn't get exploded. Make sure you don't break anything, because we will have to pay for it. Only uh, only for combat concerns. Can you do demolition? Sure. Right. Uh, further operation. Two squad will uh, will proceed eastward into sector two, while three squad approaches sector three. This is intended to overwhelm the enemy, so they flee and are proper. The enemy is allowed egress to the north, to the northeast, and the east, in order to separate them from civilian uh, civilian center. No fires. Administration, no further. Command and signal. Um, it will be one net, platoon net. Squads are standard. The platoon sergeant will be with the reserve on, uh, on code word. Banana, we will execute our attack on code word. Bandwagon, we will consolidate for extraction. No secondary signals. Questions? Anybody have questions? Are we going in by air? Yes. Where do we land? This in of Kakao. In LZ, previously marked by VS panel by special forces. Yo, why, why do you parachute out of the CH-47? Is that indicated here? No, we're not parachuting. Airborne assault? So you mean uh, you're actually landing? Okay, no. Air assault. Air assault. Yeah, you said it. You said airborne at the beginning. That's a mistake. Sorry, Mark, I misunderstood that. Is that wh what's the location of the landing? Vicinity of Kakaro, down here. Uh, oh, vicinity of Kakaro. 053047. Gotcha. I was, in, I was hearing one big long word. I was looking for a town starting with a D. No. What about those reinforcements? The reinforcements are likely to ingress from the west through our ambush. All other, you know, it's reactionary. We do have a warning OP team up on, on 2353. Alright, cool. Um, so we'll call it right there. Uh, the pretty good overall brief. Uh, the only things that I really had is, I as a rifleman, am I going to know what the overall big picture is from that brief? Can anybody answer that? Let's say so. Yes. All right. So that's that's really what's important, right? Is because we not only are your, your squad leaders are important, but if you're, I'm not saying that you know, the rifleman in one one needs to know exactly what one three is going to be doing out you know, X time. That's really for the squad leaders and the PLs. But I, as a rifleman, understand the overall big picture of what we're trying to do. And that's really the most important part of the briefing. And that's where you capture your audience. If you don't capture your audience by the lowest echelon, then your briefing is really null and void. Um, so you brief big to small. All right, you brief the overall objective. You brief what, you know, uh, what the overall objective is. Not really why we're there. I understand that that adds to the realism, yeah, but I, I, as a rifleman, just have to make up some shit. Yeah, no, I, I completely <laughs> agree with it, dude. Uh, you know, read the mission notes. But um, uh, to be honest, like I said, you have that 15 minute window, right? So you really want to. All the important stuff needs to be thrown out there as fast as possible, efficiently, and you need to be able to capture your audience with that. Um, now, all that other stuff that's in the briefing, I'm not saying that it's wrong. I'm just saying, you know, if you're going to utilize that that 15 minutes, that 15 minute window that I like to call, uh, you want to get as much information out as possible that's relevant to the to objective one, right? So, uh, how do we do? Like, let's say, you know, Bubba A does has zero experience as a platoon leader. This is the first time he has he's going to be briefing about 50 people. He, you know, uh, Mark, that that's you've probably done it a couple of times on the server, and a couple of times is being, you know, like I said, you've probably done it a lot, so it makes sense to you. Yeah. But uh, somebody that hasn't done it before, this isn't a pro this isn't a platoon leaders course. This is a briefing course. Just to, to discern the two of those uh, right off the bat. 
this course, the intent is not to teach you how to uh, assault this entire AO with a platoon-sized element. All right, this is to teach you how to disseminate that information out. Um, so personally, this is my per this fluffer's technique. Take it for what it's worth. All right, the, the reason why I had Marco in there going first is to give his perspective on it. Um, but this is, you know, not dropping markers on here, but uh, disseminating the information. This is how we disseminate it. Just using objective one as an example. All right, so how do I do it? Find, fix, track, target, engage, assess. All right, those are, that's a key word. That's an acronym that uh, I, as an, a prior sensor operator or in the aircrew business, use on a daily basis. Find, fix, track, target, engage, assess. All right, so find the enemy. Fix, fixate on that enemy, track him, and engage him. All right, um, I'll write that down here so you guys can see it. Got to run for a minute. Right, you guys see that to the west of objective one on hill 252? Find, fix, track, target, yep. engage, assess. Yes. All right. Acronym that I use on a daily basis. Whether you're an air crew flying an F-16 and a predator as a squad leader on the ground, this is a uh, this is an acronym that I use on a regular basis. And uh, find the enemy, right? So find the enemy objective one. We need to be able to get eyes on the enemy. We need to be able to discern where they're at, basically fixate on the target. We need to be able to track the enemy and see what they're doing before we engage them because we don't just get to our BOF and then start shooting our guns, right? We observe the enemy, we see the composition of the enemy, and we see where the vulnerabilities are. Um, if you notice, a, you know, let's say in Sector 2, for example, if there is a weak spot there where we could actually penetrate and then get into that AO, then I'm going to exploit that as much as possible. All right, so you're going to target the enemy as well. You're going to discern your 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 targeting information to the squad level, basically on the squad level. You know, let's say one one is going to be hitting a uh, a, a technical in the middle of the town. One two is going to be assaulting the town, following the technical being neutralized, and then one three being an overwatch and stopping reinforcements that are infiltrating from whatever direction. Um, you that's your targeting information, right? Now you engage it. Now you execute your plan. Now everything comes into play. Now 1-1 one, one is going to be initializing that dishka or that technical. 1-2 is going to be assaulting the town. Now 1-3 is going to be moving in a key position to overwatch and block reinforcements. Following that, now you're going to assess the damage. Now you're going to assess if you've actually completed your objective. Now you're going to assess if there's other stuff that needs to be done. Now you're going to reconsolidate and do that all over again for the next objective. Does it make sense? So if you if you tailor your briefing to that, then I guarantee you with a, you'll get it done in about 15 minutes. All right, that's just the overall planning portion of it, um, and disseminating the information onto the map to where it makes sense. Being able to find your objective, being able to fixate on it, track it, target it, engage it, and then assess it. All right. Yes. Any questions Although, on that? This might yep. be because you're a predator, but. That model relies on you being the superior force. It, it relies does. on you having the, the superior troop and the initiative at all times. <laughs> but you can tailor that. You can tailor this acronym to pretty much any anything. All right. If you're on a defense, if you're in a defensive posture and you need to find the enemy, then obviously you redeploy yourself to where you can find them and then fix them or fixate on them. Now, I mean, you see what I'm saying? You can really use this for anything. It's not because you know I can see I'm at 3,000 AGL and I'm looking down through my Sodistral targeting pod and I can see the whole AO and I've got air superiority. You can really use this for basically any scenario if you tailor it to that. That was just was an just, example. Quickly, so if it was turns into an assessment and find. Assessing, exactly. okay. Because it so kind of segues into each other, doesn't it? It does, it does. And the reason why finding and assessing is completely different is finding is your initial movement or you're trying to initially get eyes on the area or you're trying to find your objective. Assessing is, is really taking a step back and saying, did we do everything correctly? And is there anything else that needs to be done before I call this mission complete? 
and there's there's the assess the uh, the assessing melding into the flank. You're saying is there anything else needs to be done? You're finding it. Mm, not really. You, you, you could kind of keep repeating that process. You could. You could. You could um, but that's you know your competency as a PL is going to determine that. I'm, I was just thinking if you were actually on the move, you could be executing that in kind of a repeating process. Yeah, you could you could you could move assess to find. You could move find to assess. So you could move engage because you found them <laughs> almost immediately. But if you keep those, you know, if you keep those six things in mind and you you at least use them in the order, you'll have some sort of organization. Um, and I've briefed this to JTAX. I've briefed this to, uh, I mean, you name it, guys, Tenth Mountain dudes that have come in and asked us how we do operations, how we could better, you know. Uh, um, aid their their mission planning and being able to their objectives. I when I teach somebody, uh, you know, our capabilities, I use this model. Depending on, like, let's say for example, I'm in a green flag and I'm, you know, supporting um, an air assault into a objective that they're going to be taking. I use this as a framework to my briefings, and I've had numerous S2 dudes come up to me and be like, "Dude, can you like write that down and you know help us use this information uh, and tailor it to our needs." I'm not saying that it's gonna, you're going to be able to use this in every aspect at every single time in every mission, but it's a good at least it's a good framework to build off of. Uh, and that's just my personal opinion. Use it if you want to. Take it if you do. Take it if you don't. Doesn't really bother me. All right. Um, find, fix, track, target, engage, assess is a good good methodology to use. It gives you structure if you haven't used it before. If you're if you have something that you've been using and it makes sense, and by all means keep using it. All right. Now, the, the one thing I liked about Mark's briefing is that it was a one-way communication all the way to the end. And then the, the questions came out and everybody was, you know, is there an airborne assault? Is there an air assault? Two different things, right? Um, a lot of that stuff was ca coming in as a two-way conversation and that information was disseminated because people weren't sure about it. Where is it LZ? Where is it located? Um, but that's stuff that you could easily avoid, though, if you plan for it. And obviously, this is just for training purposes, so it's not really accurate. Um, most of the time, that's taken care of pretty, you know, pretty quickly. Uh, but moving on and getting on to the next point here is the actual briefing on how I do it. Uh, not on, on top of find, fix, track, target, engage, assess, is really a tool to use while you're making your brief or you're you're trying to plan your briefing. Um, but the actual briefing portion of it, this is personally how I would do it, and this is how I do it in, in BMS and some instances in ARMA. Um, but the the framework is really who you are. All right. So, and the reason why I say that is it's important for me to know who we are. Is are we a platoon element? Are we a company size element? Are we a squad size element? Um, now you can tailor that at your briefing point and and at any time. Whether you're a squad leader in game and you're briefing your you know you're briefing your fire team leaders and then you're disseminating that information down to your squad level, or you're briefing it at the platoon level and you're you know at this screen here. And you're trying to uh, complete an objective. Now, what I mean by who are you it doesn't mean that you go in here and you look at, let's see, hopefully it's in here. All right, so it's not like I'm going in here and I'm saying, all right, HQ is Gambler Gear for Squad Alpha, Bravo Charlie for, you know, two squad, three squad repeated, or in succession, SOG Delta team is Delta. That's not what I'm talking about. Who we are is, all right, what is our overall objective? We're an airborne or we're an air assault. We're going to be landing at this location. Or obviously, if I say air assault, then I know that we're going to be taking some sort of helicopter and we're going to be landing at one point and then moving on foot to an objective. Make sense? Yeah. Clears mud. Yeah. All right, so Although that's that, who we are. That, Go ahead. That who we are thing, I think, uh, in some missions, really, uh, depending on who you have in your in your leadership squads, it does actually make sense, I think, to go over once you then assign tasks and you reference to them with their with their call signs to actually iterate who the who is who, right? Ex I dude, I completely agree. I a hundred percent agree with that. And like I said, this can be tailored. You can move it in any way, in any way, shape, or form. If it were me, I would be briefing. You know what are like? Let's say uh, you have three squads right off the bat. I can't tell you how many times I came. The first time I started playing Arma, I had no idea what the what the naming structure was. 
because nobody really explained it to me and it was you know what i mean it didn't make sense but if i could do that if we could set up an sop to where platoon leaders or company commanders are off the bat saying hey all right i will be one six one one is led by x person one two is led by x person or two squads led by it doesn't matter what naming convention that you are but you're you're putting a name to a face right yes and no because it doesn't have to be so fucking difficult whether you're six or zero it doesn't, but my point is establishing that bef at the front. Yeah. If you establish that at the front, and like most of the time when I see command and signal being reviewed at the end, if you review that at the beginning, now you've already you've already knocked that out because you're already identifying who's who, and you're going to be exactly. de identifying what channel they're going to be on to get in contact with. Yeah, I'd do that basically. Because what, what can happen is you end up you know assigning... Support by fire positions and tasks for 1-3, and then at the end people realize, oh, I'm 1-3, so I have to review everything again because I didn't look at it. Right? So, exactly. Yeah. Now, that's that's really the whole point of uh, what I was trying to get at with the whole who you are thing. Not yeah. really just breaking it down by you know in the very minute details, but getting the overall picture out on who you are and where can you be found. It's especially important in Arma Fluffer because you have two names when you look at the slot up screen. Often you'll be like one, two, but you're also two, two squad two. or yeah, and it'll, it'll say that right in the slide screen. So somebody might be confused. What, who is he talking to? Is he talking about one, two, or is he talking about two, two? Because it, it'll, it'll actually have two different designations right in the slide screen. Then sometimes when you go into, when you go into the game, you've, you've got it on the, on the map, in the notes, on the call signs, you've actually got another name. And then you end up with a commander sometimes that will pick his own name. So people are trying to figure out from four different names, what are they called? And you have to keep in mind, unlike in reality, our call sign structure and, you know, every, the entire structure changes with every mission, right? Every two it hours, does. everything is completely new. You don't have that amount of change in reality normally, right? Maybe on a daily or operational basis, but not, you know, every two hours, everybody's somewhere completely else under a different... Also, so it is important, I think, to iterate that so there's no mis... It's really mis important, and the trouble is for the lowly squad leader that doesn't quite understand what, what the intent is, he's stupid because he couldn't figure out what the commander was talking about. All right, so moving on uh, to the west, you can you guys see those markers that I dropped? One six, one 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 two. Yep. All right, so like I said, this is now we're opening this up to a two-way communication here. Um, very important that, in my opinion, I want to, as the rifleman on the ground, or the rifleman at the very basic level, or even as a squad leader, I want to know this structure beforehand. All right. Now, the comseg and the command and signal, you can review that later if you want. I'm not going to tell you what to do. But if I can eliminate that all at once and establish who we are and what channel I can be found on, I almost immediately eliminate all that confusion right off the bat. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah. Yes, but it's easier to implement as a mission mission making level because it, you just and that's make something that's going to be have to be brought up to the mission makers. The list of who's there the is there is a quite nice script by uh, Crackman that is featured in some missions. Um, uh, Crackman has it. C's made it way back when as well. Oh, it doesn't matter. You have a basically you have a this entire thing displayed with the names of the individual group leaders in yeah. one of the sub tabs. That way you. Them you make it jib enabled as well. Yeah, it's something that is very handy, so you don't have to... Uh, I've, I've only seen it in one or two missions, and it, it didn't occur to me before. I just randomly ended up on the thing and then realized that this was in there, and it's quite nice. I think it's, for example, on Bot on the Risers. Um, you can see what I mean. That that would be something I think that would be even good to have in, in the mission SOP to be almost mandatory for every mission. Could make it an add-on, similar to how or the debug that. console okay. documentation is. I'm sorry, what exactly does it do? Lists who's what. Uh, and it updates in the course of the mission, so if you have people jipping in and out and taking squad leads, uh, then that is reflected in there. Because obviously on that... In the dark. this mission. Okay. Anyway, we're drifting off topic from yeah, television making. <laughs>
Yeah, but it, it's a really important point, so it's worth emphasizing. It is, and I agree with that. Why did that turn green? You have uh, you have actual ABF markers now, in case you didn't notice it. Really? Oh. Yeah, you can orientate them in all directions. Um, they're above uh, when you go arrow up. I think you get them. Face. Yeah, I see it. So that symbol with the bracket and the arrow above it, that's a blocking symbol? Hmm? Or is that a symbol? No, 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 no. The 1-1 one, one blocking pause, I just put that on there just as marker. No, this is support by fire. Is that a support by fire? Actually, no, that's uh, attack by fire. Attack. attack by fire. And the different versions of it is just directional, right? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, you cannot. That's one. That's the other one. This is support by fire, right? I believe so. I'm trying to get the orientation. <laughs> I'm going through like 18 different markers. There we go. There's only four of each. So. Yeah, it's fair enough for most purposes. It doesn't have to precisely point at where you be firing at. You can mark that and emphasize that with uh, like an engagement area or in this case if you're attacking the objective by fire from afar it's just the objective you're attacking right normally all right uh, so let's move on here so who's who who's who is what all right so who are you and who is what we talked about that uh, you know, off to the side there, I got one six, one one, one two, one three, and then I'm not even going to worry about the helo insertion, all the call signs for that. I really don't care about that. But what's mostly important here is being able to identify who's doing what and where. Um, so where are we going and who's going where? All right, that's I think that's we've all got a good, pretty good grasp on that in game. You know, being able to mark one one, one two, one three, base fire, assault by fire, objective one, any I one, you know, your phase lines and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, where are we going and who's doing what? So overall, just off the basic, you know, somebody looking at the big picture here, let's take this step by step. We got HLZ Alpha to the southeast, and then let's set, make this a form up point. All right, so the HLZ is there. You guys see that at, uh, what is that grid? Uh, 067048. All right, now how you guys get up to the front, to the, PL, the form point, that's up to you. But overall, just looking at this big picture-wise, the one thing that's going to be an issue is one, the 1-3 one base of fire. So how would you as a PL tackle that? Because you got a big fucking mountain in the way. And you're not just going to walk through objective one to get there. So would you offload two squads at HLZ Alpha and then set up a secondary L a a LZ at the uh, teener section at 067060? That would make sense as the most efficient thing to do, time-wise. Time-wise, right? So that's another thing to yeah. take in consideration. I see a lot of missions where people, you know, they, they have an objective for a different squad that's way out in the middle of nowhere, and they don't tell them how they get there except for that, that that's where they're going to be going. All right, so I'm not saying that you need to micromanage your missions. I'm just saying that keep it simple. And if you can help your teammates out or help your squads out, then do it. Obviously, I don't think anybody goes in with the intent on saying, hey, fuck you guys, I'm going to, you know, <laughs> I'm going to give you guys this BOF and then how you get there is up to you. I don't, I'm not saying that that's what, what everybody does. I'm just saying, you know, just stay cognizant of that. Um, so we, we established who we are, who is what, on what channel, basically. Uh, where are we going and who's going where? So let me set up this secondary HLZ here.
Now, let's open this up to a discussion here. Um, how do you guys feel about uh, markers and how they're being used in, in briefings? It really aggravates <coughs> me when someone will put just like the generic, like this kind of marker, when it should be, map, you know, yeah. proper one for whatever it is they're trying to do. Now, what would be your remedy to fix that? Apart from telling them, and then they'll just get, well, you know, it's not that big deal, dude. I don't know. Well, I first think of having all, a, uh, uh, the problem with markers is that there's, mm, you know, l there's limitations on what you can mark. I mean, uh, on a military uh, map, uh, graphics control measures, you would be able to draw lines. You would be able to draw assault positions and all that stuff. You can't do that in Arma. You I can't. Mean, even the attack by fire. I mean, the, at the, the attack by fire marker is, you know, what you mean is the assault position. But, you know, sure, yeah. you marked the attack yeah. by fire, which is something completely different. But the biggest thing here is that you'd let them know what your intent is with that marker. Exactly. Now, That's the most important thing. You have to, whatever you put down, you have to make sure everybody that the marker is relevant to understands what you're, you want them to do there, right? So if you're marking a 1-2 ABF, you want to make sure they know what they're supposed to do there. So in this case, you probably don't want them to actually attack by fire, but you probably want them to assault the objective from the south, right? Um, and then you just have to clearly state that. And then even then, if you're misusing ABF by its real-life terminology, as long as people understand what you mean, the it should work, right? Although ideally, obviously, you would want to try to avoid using wrong terms for something because there could be somebody that thinks, all right, I'm going to sit there and shoot at the town from there because um, that's what it's supposed to be. But as long so as the recurring theme the intent, here is that you know, we don't have all the resources available to make these markers work, but the biggest thing is thinking outside the box and then telling them what they, what they are is almost as effective as having the real markers. True, yeah. Although with the new, um, with the new tinier dots, I think you can more easily even draw lines. I've been playing around with them. I kind of like the, um, the ability to mark more subtle lines. And then... I think the uh, problem with that is the line's going to look a lot different depending on uh, what zoom level each individual person's at. Yeah, that's that's very true as well. So, like I said, the, the biggest thing here is just letting them know what, what you're expecting out of these markers. And, I mean, ABF, most people understand... Oh, hey, nice. Great, that's, um, so that's fine. Um, but most people understand what ABF is, some people don't, but the biggest thing is letting them know and telling them right off the bat. I got a quick question in terms well, of, uh, you mean... A them, like, let's say you wanted to assault by fire, or let's say you wanted to do a, uh, I don't know, what other marker would you, do you see that's usually screwed up with an ABF mark? SBF, they're used uh, simultaneously. For no, SBF and ABF are pretty much the same thing. Yeah. So the thing you marked at 1-3 BOF is technically an SBF marker. The one at 1-3 exactly. ABF is an ABF marker. And they're, they're pretty much the same thing. It means you attack from afar, uh, you fire from afar, and you do not close in with the enemy, right? So exactly. an ABF position is pretty much the same thing as an SBF position. The only difference is that you're supporting a friendly maneuver force in the one case, and in the other case, you're focusing on just attacking an enemy. Question. Go. On, uh, regarding that, if there's a distinction between an ABNF and an SBF, how, be ever, uh, how subtle it is, then what is a BOF? A BOF What's is both. In both cases, you have a, a base of fire. Right? You have um, a unit that puts up on a position and, 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 and deploys there to fire from. That's the base of fire. So it's a more generic term. Yeah. All right. It's not a. It's not a GCM. It's just like a, exactly. a description of, of what you're doing essentially. But the biggest thing here is that they, you're explaining what your intent is with that. Nine times out of ten, when I see a wrong marker put down, it doesn't get explained. True. All right. And then so you, the yeah, the go ahead. Implications then wouldn't be very significant because as long as you explain it to everyone, it's relevant to, even if it's something that is actually wrong. As long as it clarifies the intent, uh, then it's it's not detrimental, right? So. Right. All right. So the next thing is when is it going to happen? When is what happening? All right. So what are some problems that you guys see with what when? <laughs> I'm getting my tongue twisted here. When is what happening? Um, the biggest thing that I see is that there's really no timing. 
Nobody pulls out their watch and says at X hour or X minute that this will happen. It's more or less when are you going to be in position, and then when you get in said position, uh, then we'll start the assault. The biggest thing and the reason why that you probably see a watch in Arma was because everything in the military is done by timing. Everything. True. But on the other hand, I don't think we have the time for the missions where you can say, all right, not, not later than uh, 1,500, and, and then we're going to assemble on the assault position and assault at 1,700 uh, Zoom sure. time, right? Because then you spend two hours on the assault position. and So I think it does make sense to, to use flexible phasing sort of, of the missions and then just make sure you, you time that portions that need to be timed more uh, ad hoc, if you will. The biggest thing is that if you're if you're relying on certain timings to happen, where you're if you're expecting like let's say the one one blocking position is at hill two three whatever the hell five nine that is yeah two three five nine, then you're giving them sufficient time to get up there because I guarantee you the one two is going to be in position way before one one is. True, but you um, could have but, you could hold one two back at a at a. Uh, phase line or a holding point or whatever you want to call it exactly and then move them up when when it suits the time now here's yeah. the here's the other thing how do we get that disseminated because this is a briefing course i'm not teaching you guys when to how and when to use timing i'm i'm basically trying to teach you guys how to disseminate that information on basically telling your squads what you want out of them at what time Like I personally like to uh, phase the missions and to put it into different phases. So you would probably have an initial movement phase, um, where I don't know if you want to have one two halt at the building there at two three one four hill southeast of their AVF position, and then have one two pass a terrain point or something when you want one two to start moving up. And then you could coordinate that by that and already brief that ahead. So one two knows all right if one one passes that hill. Uh, we'll start moving up to our assault by fire position. Sure. All right. So the biggest thing here is disseminating the information is very important. The context of how you do it is also important. But the biggest thing is being able to tell them and telling them efficiently. Um, now, if you micromanage all your timings, then you're just going to waste time because I guarantee you shit's going to go sideways at one point in the mission. And if you're relying on timing, then it's not going to get done. Um, but with that said, it's... Like it's it's very it's a very fluid subject because you can't armor is one of those things that it, it doesn't replicate timing very well and, and you know compared to real life, um, but that's that's when 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 is what happening really? So I could say that when as your PL that when one one gets into that blocking position that one two starts sold by fire, when one's gonna be looking to the west for reinforcements or they're going to be shifting to the northeast and providing uh, more suppressive fires on objective one whether it's a specific grid or whatever you know uh, one of those things that you need to tell them what you're expecting out of them like when as one one if i start hearing gunfire to the east and i probably know that the assault's been started on the town and i should expect to see some reinforcements to the west um now disseminating that information is probably the most important part of that uh, would everybody agree with that or disagree? Yep. Uh, now, all this stuff seems very rudimentary and probably understand it and probably seen it before, but getting everybody on the same page is what's important here. Uh, so let's get moving on here. Uh, we got what happens when you get there. Uh, so that's one of my other notes. So what happens when the one two assault by fire, they've, you know, uh, commenced their assault, uh, they've su successfully neutralized whatever enemy that they can see, now what? Because I haven't planned any of the movements into Objective 1. Um, uh, now, what I mean by that is, are we going to be planning the mission up to the assault by fire mark, or are we going to be move, doing it on the fly, depending on reactionary movements from the enemy? We would assume that we're at a platoon leader stage up until mm -hmm. we get to those markers, and then, is that saying then we're going to micromanage the squads itself, and depending on what they see, we're going to plan their moves? Or in my case, I would just let them do whatever the squad leader feels appropriate as he would have a better picture being in the field itself. Okay, Unless we're so taking the squad leader role now. Perfect you example, Rusty, perfect example. Um, it depends. It depends on how you, gonna, how you manage as a PL. Go if ahead. If you're going to do that in primary, they're going to friendly fire each other. <laughs> yeah, that's true. 
But the, I guess the point was: Do you micromanage, or do you no. give the well, give not, you have to micromanage you, uh, where on what what you have to give simple objectives to each squad okay. that makes sense in an overall objective. Yeah, okay, so how do you, have how do you have communicate clear... that intent? How do you communicate that intent? Well, you set up yeah. sectors. You take you tell which squad they're taking which. You set up what squad are doing which uh what kind of role they're doing i mean that's task organization assault what's what forces assault on and what is support on and so on and so on you set up end states yep no, much do you brief that? Mark do you did. brief that in game or do you brief that beforehand well you can brief that in game you can brief it uh on the rv different things Let's the point is the point is basically just playing it by ear or whether you want to brief it in game it's one of those things that you need to have your intent said prior to getting in game so if your intent is to brief them uh once they're in game then you let them know because i guarantee somebody will ask if you don't say it yeah i mean like i said you can brief it uh before a game if you don't have enough information you have to do some recon you set up an op you brief them at the rv then you move into a release point and then you get it done sure okay so how, the next point that I have is how can you get in contact with me or each other? Uh, we, we kind of established that with who is who and or who who are you and who is what. Um, but further communications, whether like let's say you're doing you've you've done split split platoon briefings, you're at a company level. Uh, now does the basic rifleman need to know that information? Probably not. Uh, so how do you disseminate that information in your briefing? At the beginning, towards the middle, towards the end, since you're going over who is who and what is what uh, at the beginning of it, would it make more sense just to do it then and still waiting, going through the briefing and then getting to the command signals and then getting to that portion of the brief? There is no right answer. There is no wrong answer. Um, I would Personally, I would brief it at the beginning on who's who and who's or what's what. Makes sense? Oh yeah. All right. So the last point that I have on this is what happens if shit goes sideways, which happens more time enough on primary. Almost every mission I've seen shit go sideways. And what I mean by that is stuff doesn't go as planned. Let's say that, although you've probably played these missions a thousand times, you know exactly what the enemy is going to do. But let's say, for example, that one one blocking position is completely combat ineffective because their squad leader is incompetent and new. Yeah. What do you do at that point? Do you brief it in game, or I mean, do you brief it in the briefing screen? And you're going to see this recurring theme because I see a lot of it happening one way or another. But if we establish an SOP and we get all on the same page now, it's going to make things a lot easier in, in primary. Well, it depends. Like you mean something that you didn't expect happens, and you have to work deal yeah. with it. Well, I mean, if you have an incompetent squad leader, then you could do different things. You could go and investigate uh, if that's possible. If it's not possible, you could try to, uh, you know, have them come back to a CCP or something and deal it that way. Okay. I mean, I think that's an interesting topic from a uh, for discussion from a leadership perspective, considering. Uh, I mean, I can only imagine the uh, real military doesn't have such a ridiculously high uh, rate of failure. So, <laughs> you, you're you, completely right. You so could. Why, uh, you could, though. What, it's just what I want to know is why do nine times out of ten does, do our missions devolve into a colossal clusterfuck? Because people, are sh <laughs> basically, someone fucks something up and from there it's a fail cascade of something else fails because of it. But if you pre-brief what you, like, let's say, for example, all right, in the briefing, if 1-1 one, one becomes combat and effective, 1-2 one, will split off a fire team, go to 1-1's one, position, and take up another blocking position, so on and so forth. The point is, is it doesn't get briefed, and that's why you have your cascading failure, a snowball effect of clusterfuck, as I like to call it. So, yeah, so you, have to, you have to plan your plan. Even if you, fail, as a, even it, if you brief to fail, you're still going to see failure. Yeah, here's the deal. Uh, you know, even let's say the generals uh, command armies in the real world, you have to have 
you have to be better than the fucking generals to command, you know. I'm not gonna say this this way, but retards in Arma, so to speak. And I'm not saying that everyone's a retard, I'm just saying you have to be better to, you know, to get the same result. But you have to know how Arma works. But if you brief, but here's my point to all of this, if you brief to the point to where the basic rifleman understands the overall objective, then he will be able to, I'm not saying lead it, but he's going to be able to be more combat effective when shit is going sideways. Now that's speculative, because that, that could be really tailored to any scenario. But what I mean by that is if you keep your brief simple and you keep it very direct in under 15 minutes and the basic rifleman understands that, I guarantee you'll have more cohesion and you'll have more competency on the server. Oh. For sure. All right. All right, so let's go take this objective. Everybody hop on a helicopter. Whoa. Just kidding. Um, yeah. No, guys, I got a lot of good notes from that. The next time that we do this course, it's going to be way more structured. I'm sorry that it was kind of a gaggle fuck, but <laughs> this is all basically written on a notepad for me, and I take a lot of the shit that I use from real world. But the next time that this course is being run, I'm going to have a lot more people involved in it, and we're going to have this structured to where it's... It's on, I mean... Or, it were, you're yeah, looking for feedback, right? That's yeah, why please, you please, up this. please. So, from me, here's the following feedback. But if you use it, use it effectively, right? Hold questions till ever, after, for if you're doing a briefing, if you're having that one-way communication. Like I said, hold it till afterwards. Briefings are for the commander, not for questions. Uh, so your platoon leader with your squad leaders, you break up in the channel, you're doing planning, that is a two-way conversation. When you're in a briefing, it's a one-way conversation. All right. If it doesn't make sense, brief privately. If a squad leader has a question, I mean, by all means, you know, have them poke the other person or platoon leader in team speak and not just defy his orders right in front of everybody because then you're losing uh, you're losing confidence and on top of that you're lessening the cohesion of the of the unit. Um, project your voice with assurance. All right, so if you're talking, make sure that you are making sense, but not only making sense, you're sound, I'm not saying sounding authoritative, but you're, you know, you're projecting your voice in a, in a manner that I'm not just whispering into the microphone and not everybody's listening to me. All right, so uh, simplicity and coherent is also another big point is keep it simple to where the basic private, uh, you know, on the ground, the rifleman understands your big picture plan, but he doesn't need to know every minute objective, you know, whether it's clearing each individual bearing, building, what one three is doing when he's one one. All right, and the biggest other thing is KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. Keeping it very rudimentary, very basic. I don't need 80 markers on the map to get my point across. Um, moving on to the actual structure of the briefing. Who is what? Where is what? And uh, Who is what? Where can I find them on what channel? Where are we going and who is going where? When is happening when we get to that point? What happens when you get there? How can you get in contact with me or another person? Like I said, that segues. I would usually touch up on that just in case there's questions on it towards the end of the briefing. What do you do when your objective is complete? And what happens if shit goes sideways? So you're planning all aspects of the mission. Who, what, where, when, how, why, and when shit goes sideways, basically. All right, guys. Any questions? Please, any feedback, comments, concerns, anything that you need to say, please say now. I'll write it down and I'll take note of it. No questions, except uh, I really want that people here uh, know the difference between attack by fire and assault position. I put both definitions in the uh, TeamSpeak chat. And the primary difference is what you guys understand under attack by fire is basically what you mean is assault position, which is position between the line of departure or wherever you are and the objective which uh, is the last covered in the concealed position. Before yeah, it's the thing you occupy before you actually start assaulting the town, right? And, and it's ideally yeah. something that provides some cover towards it. And yeah. attack by fire is actually, I mean, Weapon X would probably uh, talk about this more, but the attack by fire is mostly used by, like, tanks and things. Exactly, yeah. Because normally what you do end up doing is support by fire, because you're always supporting yeah. a other maneuver squad platoon. Yeah, I'll link to the, uh, this is from the FM. Uh,